I'm Matt Bronger. This might help. I am not a doctor. This might help. I'm not a professional. Let's have fun. This honestly is a good time. Honestly, I got no idea what I'm doing. What's going on? Who are you? I'm Matt Bronger. This might help. The podcast. Okay. I'm going to start too. I am recording. Hey, welcome to This Might Help with Matt Bronger coming from a spooky, spooky haunted hotel in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, Jared is somewhere sunny and uh, full of lively people, I can see. I don't know if anyone's watching this, but if you do and you're wondering, like, <laughs> why are you on Ghost Hunters? I'm not. I'm in a hotel room and I just turned on the desk light and I turned off the light behind me. I've had a couple Zoom auditions today and they've been spooky and weird. I'm, I'm traveling and just the best. Zoom life, everybody. I have a guest on the show today who, uh, you know, a lot of you guys know I love having uh, young up and coming comedians like myself on. And uh, just like, no, you know, because I don't look at it as competition. Yes, I'm known for being super young and all, but uh, let me hammer that. Fantastic joke home, even more. Uh, he's very funny. Uh, I first became aware of him by actually doing a Zoom show with him, and I thought he really killed it, and I think that's a very, very unique skill. It's kind of like there's stand-up, and then there's stand-up on Zoom. Because Zoom is just, it just sucks. It, it rhymes with doom, not as a coincidence. Like, it sucks so bad. Uh, so I, that really hit me off and I uh, about him, and I and I... Uh, I saw him a couple more times live, and I'm a big fan, and if you don't know him, you will be uh, soon. He actually, speaking of which, was in the Vulture Magazine's uh, 21 Comics You Should and Will Know, Jared Goldstein. Jared, how are you, man? Hi, I'm great now. That was so nice. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Oh, sure. No, I, I remember I'd never met you before when we were on that Zoom show, and I thought you were so funny, and I started following you online and everything, and, um, and then I... I I became even more of a fan of yours when I read that interview and I got a little more of your background. God damn it. That thing about you being in class and saying you were Japanese and then uh, a student being like, no, we don't say that, we say Asian. And the whole class was like, that's correct. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh. Like I, I've used this expression about a lot of things, but like my stomach made a fist when I read that. I was like, <laughs> that thing where you're like, oh, oh no. Yeah. yeah, you know, life, wild ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what, did you have a lot of that growing up, being someone who is what, what some describe clumsily as multi-ethnic, you know? I, you I know, honestly, I yes and no. Like, um, okay. like, even in that moment, like, the student was just like, thought they were doing the right thing. You know, they were like trying to like, <laughs> do something good yeah. um and I, like ultimately like I grew up in like a pretty progressive town in a not so progressive place on Long Island okay um and it, it weirdly like I didn't become so aware of like my Asian-ness my identity my half Asian-ness uh until I went to college left Long Island went to New York City and then started meeting all of these new people all the time who didn't know me already and wanted to know. Yeah. What are you? What are you? What are you? So like, yeah. we, it's, it was sort of the reverse, like my small town, they just okay. knew me. So nobody asked, but then once I moved <laughs> to a big city, no one knew me and everyone always wanted to know. And I, and then I was like, Oh, right. I'm... Yeah. I, it's funny. I'm, I'm struck by how little anyone really, there was definitely racial differences and, and separation, uh, in terms of who lived where and stuff, but it's like all of us in school, I'll just say there wasn't as much, uh, hey, what are you? You know, as, yeah. a, as, I, as I, not me, but like encountered friends going through into our young adulthood thing mm -hmm. where, you know, as as Hari Kondabalu uh, puts it in his, in, his, in his act, it just means, why aren't you white? That's all that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need answers. <laughs> I must define you from my perspective alone. Yeah, I, yeah. I that 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 part that that moment, and that's that's so funny. It's that's so that's so low key and 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 uh, uh, low level mid Samar. That kid saying, "No, these are you're Asian." Like you, you're trying <laughs> to do the right thing, but you're doing horrible things. You know. Yeah, <laughs> I was in a cult. 
<laughs> Look, we, we have to kill. If we don't kill you and bury you in the ground, the crops won't grow. So exactly. you got to go, man. I mean, the closest thing I had to that was when I was like a little kid. I was with my mom and she jogged me to the bus stop because that was the thing in the early 80s and put me in a, a school bus. And I thought everyone would be nice to me like my parents. And so I got on the bus and there were kids. I remember that had mustaches almost. You know, it was like it was like everybody from first grade to eighth on this bus. And I just opened the window and my big like, you know, my own little corner of the sky moment is I looked at my mom and went, bye, mommy. And the whole bus goes, bye, mommy. Ah! <laughs> like it, was just, it was this moment where like, I'm all alone. And the bus just takes off. You know, you're just like, it was such a ripped from the <sighs> womb of comfort moment for me. That is crushing. It was so awful. How old were you? Oh, got six. 14. <laughs> 23. <laughs> yeah. You were six. God, kids are so cruel. Ugh. Yeah. I do I do feel though, like when I hear about a kid being homeschooled. Hi, mommy. Oh, ah. So bad. I, I do the dark side of me when I found out someone's being homeschooled, like a kid is homeschooled, I'm like, but are they getting enough abuse? Like it's such a terrible thing <laughs> yeah. to think. But it's like not that I want bullying or anything like that, but it's just like you kind of need to be kicked around a little, you yeah, know, I don't know. I do wonder like what that would create. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but what, where, like where in Long Island or did you grow up? Uh, in a town called Woodmere where okay. both Jill Zarin from the Real Housewives of New York. Oh, wow. And yeah. Harvey Milk from the Real <laughs> sure. Housewives of New York from the, is from. <laughs> <laughs> from, from the newly named Battleship. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's my town. Nice. That was very cool. Yeah. Uh, one of our oldest like family friends who's now 90 and still uh, gets out and community organizes. He, he worked under Harvey Milk like 100 years, you know, way back in the oh, day. Oh, wow. And he's this kind of like ardently uh, just Greek pride man. You know, love San Francisco, but if you talk about Greece, he's like, well, you know, we invented democracy, you know, things like that. And he, and he <laughs> and worked gay. At... <laughs> yeah. They and, did it first. Yeah, true. True. Yeah. And he's not. He's straight. But uh, yeah, he's he's one of those guys who's kind of like if someone builds a building a little too high in his neighborhood, he, he climbs it and measures the shit. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. It's, it's just like, whoa. Yeah. John is is hardcore, but. It's it's funny. I feel like we have less and less of those people that are joining politics for all the right reasons, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that kind of thing. Um, I loved in your in your interview how you said uh, you when you did you you knew you wanted to do comedy when you bombed, but then didn't. I think mm. what you said, and then it then it was kind of okay, you know. Yeah, I kind of, I knew right away. Like the first time I went to an open mic, uh, I was drunk, and I was bar hopping with a friend and I looked up this open mic at Marty's on Sunset. Are you familiar? Marty's? Oh, I don't think I know it. Uh -uh. It was like uh, basically just an abandoned office building that a guy named Marty had turned into uh, an open mic dungeon. <laughs> Cool. That Good boasted party. multiple rooms of open mics, um, which was uh, technically true. Um, one of them was a bathroom, but um, oh, it was God. it was uh, it was something. And I looked it up, and I, I basically just tricked my friend uh, into going to Marty's with me. Wow! And I was like, "What's that?" And I was like, "It's a bar. Let's go." We showed up. It certainly wasn't a bar. Uh, there was maybe three people watching wow. one person. And I was like, this is an open mic and I want to try it. Um, and I got up there and I just rambled and it felt like what I thought it would feel like. And I thought, okay, let me try it again and I'll try material and I'll not be drunk and, and all this yeah. stuff. And yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah but I, mean, I did it's... bomb for like three straight months, three well, straight yeah. months. Didn't yeah. ever not bomb for three yes. months. You have to. I mean, I, I had I had uh, Colin Mockery on on the show. You know, from Whose Line Is It Anyway? Mm -hmm. And just insanely funny and beyond kind. And uh, someone we get people calling in. I'm sure we probably have one 
where they're there where they're like you know how do i get started la 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 and it's like the story is just fall on your face until you don't everyone knows that you know there's no magic elixir to drink or you know mm-hmm. class that you can learn and someone called in and was like I, like how do i you know wanted us to kind of be like, like you know go for it and i love the fact that colin was just like we gave them all the advice we could and then colin was like but if there's anything literally anything you love more do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah true you know and he's yeah. doing great like i'm sure he's fine i'm sure he has a lovely house you know and um uh uh fuck i i have to say this too because it's still to me as like maybe because i'm in my 40s it's the funny one of the funniest things i've ever heard but his 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 he has a child uh, a child who's trans mm-hmm. uh and his mother really really trying back to the person who's really trying like <laughs> oh man yeah class, said unironically that she is a huge supporter of the blt community <laughs> and wow I, I love it so much i love wow. it so much because it's like who doesn't love a blt they're delicious I mean, it's a <laughs> i had the best blt in my life a few weeks ago in okay, where? st louis missouri Wow, where? At a place called the Bird Cafe, Songbird, Songbird okay. Cafe. Okay. Oh. oh, whoa, 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 whoa. If you're ever in Missouri, you got to okay. go. No, I'm noting it right now. Do Heirloom you- tomatoes, homemade wow. mayo. Whoa. Perfectly buttery toasted bread. Oh, God. Thick bacon. Nice. Get an egg in there. Okay. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so good. Do, do you... Do that thing. I've said this a lot that my comedy would be so much better if I spent less time researching restaurants where I'm going to tour. <laughs> That's all I do. I get on Google. I'm a Google connoisseur. I'm like, where in the world is a really good BLT? I get mm-hmm. on Google and Lists. you know, you can really tell just from the pictures of the food, you know exactly the quality of an establishment. 100%. And I don't miss, I'll be honest, you know, I don't, I don't like to brag, but I mean, I love to brag. I'm on a podcast. Um, sure. I don't miss. No. Yeah. I'm same. I've been doing it so long. Do you I use Google? Word of mouth. I have lists, you know, I will go play. And it's like, you know, I like going new places. I have standbys, but I'm also like, let's fucking jump. Let's go try this place that people have talked about. Yes. And try this thing or that thing, you know, uh, like, whatever uh but i will say this not to put you on the spot put me on the spot you are in phenomenal shape and you eat blts can i also tell you i'm currently icing my shoulder and my ankle i can barely walk too many what snatch (laughs) i don't know i think i just i think i think i I started working out over the pandemic a lot okay um and i worked out twice a day, every day for four straight months. And I, I, I didn't, I didn't hurt myself, but I think that I, I must've worn away at all of my ligaments or something because I, I can barely go on. Yeah. I, I have that, but I've been working out a long time, but not that intensely. It used to be like my thirties, I would do the elliptical to sweat out beer. Uh And then, uh, into my 40s, I started doing hit classes and spin classes and things like that, and more weights. Now I have to do weights because I have a baby who's very strong. I like, don't know how you do that. It's it's. I will say you this: you have to lift a 20 pound ball from oh, yeah. the ground up and put mm-hmm. it back down. Uh, yeah, uh, and it moves. I don't know. I don't know. I think fucking I have, moves. It. It turns, if it's like, it doesn't want to get picked up, it waits until you're almost up and goes, ugh, like throws its back out like a, like a fucking, a death drop. The baby death drops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and like, it's like, just so your wrist sprains. Like my wife and I are both like, fuck, we're constantly like, we're like stretching our wrist. I yes. just did a 20 minute hit class because I only had a, this amount of time before I did this thing, just so I can fuck it. It's like. It's upkeep. I I I'll I'll shut up about this. But no, I, really, I knew that's all I want to talk about. I feel I feel like this is way before your time. But when Mike Tyson first came out, he was mm-hmm. like a minotaur. Like when he would come in the ring, you're like the other guy's gonna get demolished. How long will this fight last? Thirty seconds. 
and it'd be fighting these dudes that would kill anyone else. But these guys are still training and they'd go in the ring scared. I'm like, I feel like one of those nameless guys he cut down and my wife is, uh, my, my daughter is Tyson. Like that's, <laughs> I, I'm training to lose like my whole life. I'm not going to win. Yeah. <laughs> but I just have to show up. That's the best I can do. You know, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm the pro wrestler that, that doesn't have a name. You know, it's like Ric yeah. Flair versus Dan Brown. You know, like, like not even just not even a fucking any kind of name <laughs> dude that's just there to lose for this guy's record. So. How is your back? How are your ankles? Fine. And how are your knees? Back and ankles are fine. It's hips. Hips. It's, yeah. It's for some reason carrying a baby. One oh, of my hips. the hip out? No, no, no. It just strains. So like middle of the night, you'll wake up and be like, what the fuck? Fuck. And you have to get out of bed and stretch your ligaments for a while and then go back to sleep. It's crazy. It's wow. the weirdest thing. Yeah, it's, it's not. I had a baby. It hasn't, my, it hasn't been my back. It hasn't been my ankles or, or, or knees. And I, I don't have great knees. But like I've done, I think it's because I've done so much spin. Because that's like my favorite. So. Spin. Hey, Dennis. <laughs> um, Hi, Dennis. I, I just, I like, I like picking a random male name. This man hates me. So you had two Zoom auditions today. I had a Zoom uh, voiceover tape to make. Oh, okay. Oh boy, fun. DreamWorks. <laughs> I, oh, so oh. we were down here <laughs> and then up here <laughs> yeah. for forty-five minutes. Oh, he started blasting music just to drown me out. I I did one last. And now week. I got mad on the horn, and he walked it, out of the damn house. I can understand. I understand. <laughs> Who is, can I ask who that is? Do you have to say their name? <laughs> yeah, uh, that is my roommate. That okay. is my Craigslist roommate. Okay, cool. You guys get along? Don't though? tell him I call him that. <laughs> of, course of course not. Yeah. yeah, we get along. We get along great. It's it's a little. Uh, here's the th I, look. I'm the annoying roommate. I want to be upfront about that. Fair. He is a dream from heaven. He is perfectly respectful, um, nice. and I am unfortunately an aspiring actor comedian, uh, <laughs> which you just you we can't be lived with right we are pretty awful ah it's, it's it's pretty bad it's it's this, an abomination yeah um yeah we can be certainly a lot you know i mean but i will say you seem to have a good disposition at least which i've always you know i do love comics i love being around them i love the mm -hmm. fact that i'm friends with have this kind of this mafioso this thing of ours you know no yeah. matter who you kind of are i do love that and i will say i know far more sufferable than insufferable people far more in comedy you know, in comedy and and uh, i would agree with that i really would because it's we're in touch with our desperation we're in yes. touch with our, our, yes. our horribleness you know yes we, yes i with... honestly i love that word so much it's mm -hmm. a bad word desperate and i mean it's you know desperate angry these are words i've had to like kind of really sit down with mm -hmm. and really kind of just warmly embrace and and sort of re learn you know yeah and yeah and 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 like when you when you've been doing it like not to be like, as long as i have but it's it's been a little while how long and have you been doing I've it? Been, what's that? How long have you been doing comedy? 20 years. 20 probably, years. Since I first, okay. I first tried it. Since I tried it. Professionally, yes. full-time, probably 12. And Incredible. Like, it, when you get through it that long, you've definitely been fucked over a few times. Like, yeah. I've had shit happen recently that I'm like, what the? F like, why would you, you know, kind of stuff for like, for no reason. Like I had, I, I, I've talked about this on the show, but I had a role, like literally got the phone call. It's yours after like, I don't, I can't tell you how many auditions. And then two days later, they gave it to the other guy. Like what? That's a verbal contract mother, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Like, but Damn. to still, but just, but the, to still be like, but they, they, it's like, you will go through that, but they're always like, but don't be bitter. Don't ever be bitter. And they're right. You can't because you have to have other things in your life that make you happy and things. Mm -hmm. But it is it is that thing where it's just like, well, you're gonna get punched in the dick every once in a while. I, I argue that you can be bitter. I do okay. argue that. Fair. Because, oh look, Fair. okay, so I've only been, I've been doing comedy for seven years, uh, 
soon in January. Okay. And, but I was a child actor and I've been an actor and I've been auditioning nonstop wow. for 20 years for just like okay. you, 20 mm -hmm. years. And I have had, I've, I've had a lot of experiences yeah. that are really positive and that were really difficult. Um, and for me, like get, I, when I, I got fired from, um, from a musical that was a very big deal and it was very embarrassing and hard to, to, Jesus. to watch it win every fucking Tony award, which it did. Oh, wow. Um, while I was like closeted in a freshman in college where I never wanted to be. And, wow. um, but, during that time, everyone around me was like, are you over it? Are you over it? You're going to be gun shy. Are you over it? And oh, it, and I, it was like, I, I was 17. I was a kid. Yeah. So I just did what I, what I was told and what I thought. And, and, and I just felt like such a failure. And it wasn't until years later in therapy that I really sunk my teeth into this idea that yes, I'm a failure. It beat me. I lost. If you don't want to be around me, go. Because I have to still be me. Yeah, I have yeah, yeah. to still be myself. So guess what? I fucking lost. I'm a loser who failed. <laughs> What's next? And it yeah. wasn't until I really like, I, I, I hope I never let it go. I never, ever, never, ever, never want to let that go because yeah. it has made me who I am and it, it inspires me to work hard. And yeah. it, uh, you know, it's when people tell you, you can't feel something. It's, it's like, it's like the, someone telling you, you can't say you're Japanese. They, it's coming <laughs> from a nice place. They mean a nice thing, right. but no, like you have no like especially if you're gonna like, try to be in this industry for a long mm -hmm. time you have to <laughs> you yeah. have to i would agree with that i don't think you i don't think you need to let go of those failures and that hurt not at all i no. still have yeah pop up and i go why can't i fucking let it go and it's like maybe you just can't and that's okay yeah you know because you were fucked over and like i'm not even talking about that last thing i don't even think about that one because the show basically sucked and now it's gone yeah but like uh, uh, you know, and it also, you know, it was just a, it was one of those things that it only would have lived had we been stuck home with COVID beyond COVID at this point, you know, like that thing of like, don't go outside there's zombies. Like yes. that's the only way that show would have thrived. Cause it was all, it was all kind of zoomy, but, um, there are ones where I was just like, I felt so fucked over. And I was where I was just like, I it's it's funny. I like I was thinking about because I I knew someone who worked for the company that fucked me over, mm -hmm. and uh, she texted me and she's like, "This is so fucked. I'm so sorry." You know, mm -hmm. and I was like, I was like, you know, yeah, it sucks. And but she had no part of it. She was in, worked in a totally different division. Yeah, but it was like, I look. I, the thing I looking back, it's like, like I thought maybe that it was a couple months ago, and this happened twenty like thirteen. Uh, I, I was like, part of me wishes I would have texted her back. I've never felt so humiliated and small because that's how I felt at the time, you know, where it was like, I wish I would have just shared that with her because yeah. she's a dear friend. We're still super close. Her and my wife are like fucking sisters kind of thing. But it's like, I'm also glad I didn't because I didn't want her to go, oh, I work at a terrible place because like she mm -hmm. doesn't, she doesn't. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, so you know, I don't want to get into the details, but it's like that thing where it's like, looking back though, I kind of wish I would have given myself that. Yeah. But at the time I was just like, hey, don't worry about it. It's all good. You know, like, it's not you, blah, blah, blah. Cause you do, that is the thing of like, shake it off, walk it off, you know, let it go, be the bigger man, you know, all that, all that jazz, all that fucking bullshit. Mm -hmm. Uh, when it is, you know, you kind of have to, you have to take that time and go, I'm, and I yeah, did yeah. take a lot of time and go, this hurts so bad. Fuck this, fuck them, you know, uh, and it still flares up, but it's just like actions have consequences. And when people do shit to you and shouldn't have, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's tough. just like, it is yeah. tough and it is mean. This is a cold, mean industry. And here's what's funny. Oof. One of the people, uh, and also Matt, you were the last to know, like whenever shit like that happens, you are the last to know of course. everyone knows before you. Oh, 100%. it is so, so cold. hundred percent. And these people, 
at least two of them who who were who are doing it. I'm believing this because it's funny. Are notoriously fucking incredibly Hollywood, like like Hollywood where it's like horrible Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And one of them, I'll never forget. A couple of years ago, uh, this person, she's still she's big in the industry and blah blah blah. And she came up in a conversation with my wife, and my wife was like, "Oh, like she her her and her kid." And this person, this person who didn't know, like had, had knew of the person but didn't know them personally, went, "She has a child." <laughs> oh, like she has such a rep of being such a heartless piece of shit. Yeah, just fucking over people again and again and again. Yeah. It's like this is a person raise it, which I'm sure she is lovely to her child. I'm sure that yeah. kid will have a wonderful life and a different person, you know, in the boardroom and in the in the home. But it's just like I, that, yeah, that was so fucking funny to me that it was just like, oh, it's not just me. People do know this person is a monster. Ah, <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, my like first manager, my like child acting manager, uh, when I would tell uh, other actors who they were, their faces would fall. They'd be like, and I would just know and I would go, damn, what did they say to you? <laughs> and it was always something horrible about a nose job. Oh, oh God, children. Yeah. To oh. true to. Tr- children telling children they need nose jobs i mean it is like and the thing about like when i started it was you know it was a different time and things were really like just so toxic on the surface i was like screamed at as a kid as the only kid alone in a room of adults like i wasn't fed i like was made to perform when i was sick i like all this stuff and uh and look i signed up for it and i and i i really do like i really had more more good experiences than bad and Right. I I did everything I wanted to do, um, and some things I didn't want to do. But anyway, don't um, internalize. You were a kid. You're you 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 deserve human decency and respect. Yes. Yeah. I mean, obviously. And now and today, my the experiences that I have working today are so insanely positive and good. compassionate and kind and good. But I, I'm, I'm only now beginning to trust it. And for, cause there was a long time in the middle where I didn't work. Like I worked a ton as a kid mm-hmm. and then it got really rocky sure. in the middle, like teen, early twenties. Um, and then comedy helped and then, and then here we are. Right. Uh, but uh, it like, so in that time when I wasn't really working, like a lot changed, mm-hmm. like even small stuff. Like when I was a kid, there was like no phones on sets. That was like mm. such a rule, sure. like directors would freak out, like no phones. Uh, so when I started to work a little bit more, like in the last few years, yeah. I would not bring my phone to set and then realize right. everyone had their phone. And I was Fucking like, damn, everyone. I should have brought my phone. And I was like, wow, that changed. Look how that changed. Yeah. Um, and then also just bigger stuff, like where people are like kind and also um, Asian people are allowed to be in stuff. So that's Thank cool. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, stuff not produced in Asia right oh yeah. my god yeah Thank just goodness. wild yeah yeah well dude, fuck I, I look i wish we, i want to get more i gotta have you back on the show because i want to get more into the 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 child actor stuff alone i'd love to do like a round of calls to you people like calling <laughs> yes legit questions oh my god former child like, actors calling in well and also like i have a really sweet looking kid yes. i'm thinking <laughs> you know that kind of stuff. Keep their braces on. Keep their braces on. Yes. Keep their braces on. And get them fat. Uh, but but we got to get to calls. So we got to get uh, to the Renee, calls. Renee, uh, as I as, as I always say, uh, Jared, I don't listen to these before the hand. Renee is the grandmaster. He he listens to them. He picks them out. So we okay, don't know what's coming either of us. So Renee, roll the first call. Hey, that. I've got a bit of a quagmire. About six months ago, my fiance died in a car accident, which that really fucked me up pretty good for a while. But now it's come to the point where I've, been in contact with her cousin the whole time and we've been talking about dating and the only problem is we're kind of worried about the backlash from my fiance's parents 
there's been a couple times where we just went and hung out and, you know, it got posted about. And then all of a sudden there's these real schneid comments when nothing at all was even going on. There was no intent. And it's something we're both pretty sure we can deal with because they're kind of assholes. But at the same time, we're not trying to, like, create a whole new family drama. Any advice would help. Thank you. Bye. Fuck. Um, that's a lot. That's a heap and helping. Um, I'll just take first crack. You can't choose who you love, you know, and it's really love who you're is love. I heard that. Love, yeah. love is love, and and look, a if, even if they weren't assholes, you should do whatever you uh, you feel right doing, and uh, that's just how I feel. It is and will be always awkward. But if if this if this is truly what you want, both of you, then okay. Uh, it doesn't sound like a whole lot of time has passed from my perspective, but that's just me looking at uh, like a, a piece of paper here in terms of stats. This mm. is not. I don't know how you guys feel. So mm. look, all I can see ahead for you is kind of a rough road, but ride it out. I mean, what are you going to do? If you are in love with someone, you don't walk away because of a horrible circumstance. So, Jared, what would you say? First and foremost, I would say follow at Hey Jared Hey on Instagram. Hell yes. You're going to want to open up the app in the search bar, <laughs> type in H E Y, J A R E D H E Y. Mm -hmm. It'll be the first one that pops up and just hit follow. And that's, that's a start. That is a start. Um, you are brave, Matt. <laughs> you are brave. I mean, open I up these lines. Um, I'm praying for you, man. Yeah, yeah. That's that concludes my official statement. I mean, there's really nothing we can. It's just like I'm not going to sit here. I, I like I'll almost never sit here and be like, you know, the fuck are you doing? I'm sure this podcast would be so much bigger if I was a dick. No question. No question. Where people are like, I love how he just shits on people and their problems. Because people get on here and get real vulnerable sometimes. And it's like, I'm not uh, uh, the best judge of character, but that sounded real. That did not sound bullshit, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to take it sincerely and give the best advice I can. Uh, let's roll the next call. Hope it's a little more fun. Here we go. Uh, hey, dudes. Um, so I'm a guy in my mid-40s, like y'all. And, uh, you know, getting a boner really isn't a problem for me. It's getting a boner at a random time, like at the swimming pool. There's not really anybody particularly hot there, you know. And uh, my wife's like, hey, it's time to go. And now I sound like my kids are like, just five more minutes, just five more minutes. What the hell do you guys do in that situation? Thanks. Bye. Yay! <laughs> Saved by random boners. This is a good. That's a good one. You take this one, Jared. You take first crack. Good time. Okay. First and foremost, you're gonna wanna follow uh, at Hey. I was Jared gonna hey. say you better say that for every fucking call. <laughs> on Twitter. Again, you're gonna wanna open up the app, and at the top is a little search bar. Type in H E Y J A R E D H E Y. You prick! This is the only reason you came on the show. <laughs> <laughs> this is me evading, uh, becoming complicit in these uh, phone calls to the future. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Um... <sighs> I don't know. You take it. I can't. Oh. I don't, I got, here's, well, hey, look, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. okay. I, okay. So famously I I'm anti advice oh, specifically okay. in a call in situation. Some yeah. of my favorite podcasts have a call in element. Sure. I will listen up until the call in element. And then for, for me, 
and my family, the okay. podcast is over. Oh, okay. So coming onto this podcast is very exciting for me because it's an opportunity for me to challenge myself to dig deep, to find empathy, to yes. uh, reach out in the dark yes. in 2021 and give for nice. once. Nice. Um, yeah, this is your leg day. This is it. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and in the case of a man who is getting hard at a pool, yes. Um, look, okay, he's got a wife. I don't mm. feel bad for you. You sounds like you're in love. Sure. Sounds like you have a you have like a you've got the nuclear family on lock. You mm -hmm. can get hard. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> honestly, I, I think you're calling to brag, and that's what I have to say. I think, oh, yeah. look at me. I have a wife. I have a hard dick. Mm. I, I swim in the pool. So I don't, you don't need any advice. Certainly not from me because I don't have any of those things. I, I, I think he's predicated his problem on a bit of a falsehood where he's kind of like, I'm in my mid 40s, so I get random boners. And you're like, you're thinking of when you're 11. Like, you're thinking, yeah. of, you know, um, I mean, random boners happen. I'm in my late forties now and they still happen all the time, but it's like, you kind of fucking, you just, you kind of just deal with it. You know, I mean, is it, I don't know if I've swam and just been like, holy shit, what a rager. Like I'm about to pass out from the loss of blood rushing to my engorged penis. It's Cause I you're not swimming to, hard enough. Maybe that's it. Not I know, hard. I know someone who was military. He was training for, I think it was the, What's higher than the SEALs? What's the one that's like the big, big, big one? Oh, like Delta Force, I think. Maybe, uh, I, it wasn't maybe. that, but it's something like that. Okay. okay. Um, and they do swimming drills. Oh yeah. Like at like six in the morning, five in the morning. And he would swim so hard and fast that he would come in the pool. Um, Whoa, and he would not only get a rudder, it would grow a blowhole. Yes, yeah. and apparently it's this is biological. You can look it up, and I mean, I haven't experienced that. I mean, I've worked out a lot, wow. but I don't work out that hard. But no. I do understand, like when you are like, um, like flexing, and yeah. there is that tension. Sure, it's not it. It is similar to what happens to your muscles during an orgasm. It's not the opposite of an orgasm. Um, so I, I, I do. Uh, I have, I have some understanding of it happening. Also, the wow. guy who told me happened to be the most handsome man I ever spoke to. God bless him. Which only made the story that much more captivating. Oh, yeah. And also, it also. Where's a that audible original podcast? Yeah. Get about the him assassin who on. So fast he comes. Get him some yeah. headphones. Get him in the booth. We need that. And now looking back. You know, they shouldn't have fired my high school swim coach for yelling, I want you to swim so fast you fucking come, guys. Did he say that? And did he get fired? No, but I, I kind of wish that oh, would be Oh, okay. Thing. Yeah. Hey, he was a SEAL. That'd be amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah. You don't know. It's a thing. I don't want them to be turned on. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking incredible. Holy shit. You swim so fast you jizz. Can you believe that? No. And he kept I mean, swimming. I right. He kept swimming. <laughs> Of course, you have to you have to get away from the cum. You have to <laughs> sperm have to swimming out of him. He's swimming to the pool. Yes. So I didn't really have any advice for this at all. I don't know what to do with a boner, except for you know extinguish it the only way you know how, or wait. The end. I yeah. I don't know any fucking boner ninjas who can you know get to a level of meditation that the 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 Audi becomes an innie. I don't know how that works. So. Yeah. I think Jared gave you your answer. You just have to say, guys, before we leave, I just have to swim at the speed of sound yes. for a couple seconds. Yeah. And then then get out of the pool. And and that's and it's you know. like um like like Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. The answer to every problem is like make the, make the dog run. Exercise. Yeah, it, Tire the dog out. Tired the tired out. dog isn't barking. No, yeah, exactly. And, and a, a, a a a tired boner doesn't stand up. Yeah. So. And don't make your wife don't don't make her pay for this. No, don't go. Don't go. Hey, honey, do you want to swim underwater like you like to? Don't do that. No, 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 um, no, no. Okay, we got one more call. Are you ready? I'm not. <laughs> Let's roll it anyway. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. 
Hey, Matt. Uh, I'm a 24-year-old um, in college right now. And uh, I have a kind of dating in general kind of question for you. Um, I find myself jumping into things way too fast and uh, kind of blowing things up um, in that way. And I was wondering if you had any advice on dating or being, like, in the dating pool, looking for something serious but not trying to casually date someone but also letting them know that, you know, I'm trying to have a serious relationship, if that makes sense. Uh, thanks, man. Bye. It doesn't. <laughs> I, I I felt like <laughs> that didn't make what was the question I just felt like I just fought Floyd Mayweather just now like I'm just <laughs> I'm I'm getting punched like eight or nine times they don't hurt that much but I just I can't keep up and I can't get a beat on this guy I don't know why. It's, this okay it sounds like he has a habit of love bombing people yeah for sure just, just getting in you know as as Chet Baker said, I fall in love too easily. I fall in love too fast. I fall in love so too terribly hard for love to ever last. I think that's what he's saying. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, and, but his his thing was how do I, how do I be ready for love, but not, but also tell people I'm into casual stuff, but open for other stuff. And uh, yes, I think like, your answer a- lies with it. I think you need to figure out why you're love bombing people Mm -hmm. and only then can you have any sort of clarity or control over the situation. Yeah. I will say from my perspective, I used to do this, do this kind of thing. Do you hear me right now? Just like empathizing, thinking about others, putting myself second, yes, giving and giving. I give on this podcast yeah man you You don't see that every day i just i do want to just say that yeah you're squatting uh, above your weight right now for sure on leg day so good job Mm. and kudos thank you thank you thank Um, you i did like that thing where i I jump in too much but i will say from my perspective it was because i would let things go too far so as to not hurt the other person and that's the thing that i always want to make clear just be honest don't be cruel but tell people just how you feel you know if you don't see this going past anything there's ways to say that you know uh and and you you're not looking for anything else in that situation or or whatnot um don't kind of just be like no no tall yeah you're great we're we're great together (laughs) like you're kind of letting the momentum get away from you. I think it's, yeah. it's just it's just like anything. It's just all about communication. And so. I, I do want to step in to support. I didn't I didn't catch his name again. Listening, I don't other, think he gave et cetera, it. Not really my my strong suit, but sure. um, yeah. I do want to step in and give you a moment of support and acknowledge <clears throat> that it is difficult. It is difficult to say these kind of things, mm-hmm. and I think in in this toxic advice culture in which we live (laughs) people love people love to act like it's so easy to say this stuff to people and they Mm. will do it in the following way they will say something to this effect they'll say just tell them hey which first of all do you ever start a sentence with hey i'm like no one's saying hey no no so right away you've lost me i don't believe you and i know you've never done this right but they go, just say, hey, I'm not really looking for anything. And it's like, ah, I one's uh, not that no one, but not a lot of people have ever said that to me. And I don't think you've said it many times. And I can't imagine that it's that it went great. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. And at the very least, at the very least, acknowledge that you can't just say, hey, and no. then and then a sentence you can't you can't you can't no. yeah agreed and i looking back the times where i did make it clear like that it's kind of like the other person would kind of sometimes look at me like well yeah that's me too stupid you know <laughs> uh, yeah what well, yeah. we're, we're we barely know each other and we're hooking up does that tell you that i'm fucking looking to live with you or some shit you know Let's just hook up and in the morning be some breakfast. Mm. How about that for a relationship for you and I? 
you know, kind or of thing. Like, hop on Google, look at some pictures, mm-hmm. make some choices, some and get choices. out there. Yes, absolutely. Hey, dude, you're overthinking it. That's my advice to, to you, bud. Like, you're just overthinking it. Just get out there and, and, and do the thing. And, you know, if you if you have some real feelings for somebody, share them. There you go. Yeah. Hey. And also try to get to the bottom of, of why you're doing what you're doing. Because that's yes. the thing. Knowing is not enough by half. Mm-hmm. You got, but you have to, you do have to know it though, to, to kind of change and, and, and make right. new choices. But, um, but yeah, you, you, you first have to understand why you're love bombing people. And then you got to figure out um, how to stop doing that. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. You did it. You fucking did the thing. Good job, Jared. Incredible. You graduated. Work. All around. You made it. You made it through. Is there anything you want to plug before we go? <laughs> Honestly, like you always say that I to everybody. It in. That wasn't you know, just I kind of I worked it in. So I, I I got it. I think I mean, if you want to if you want to um support the Green New Deal, I highly nice. recommend that. I like that. Um if you have a Roku, <laughs> check out <laughs> Nikki Fresh. Nice. If you don't have a Roku, get a Roku. Yeah, my parents have one. Live a little. Live. (laughs) Live. Dude, this was a joy. Thanks for coming on here. This was so fun. fun. I had a great time. Thank you, Matt. Absolutely. Let's get coffee when I'm back in goddamn town. I'm I miss Los Angeles. Please. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to New York for a little while. So if you're there soon. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, I I will be. No, I was gonna be. And now it's now it's gone. Shit. I don't know when I'll be back. But uh Anywho, yeah. let's keep in touch. And uh, thanks, man. You did awesome, and you look fantastic. Thank I didn't you want so this to much. End, That's what's really yeah. important. It really is. It really <laughs> yeah. Is. <laughs> we fight every day. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. That was a blast. Jared's the best. Look him up. Follow him on all those places he said so many times. Uh, if you have any need for advice and uh, want some answers to some fun questions or not so fun. Call 323-763-0228. Again, that's 323-763-0228. This Might Help with Matt Bronger was created and hosted by me, Matt Bronger. Produced by Outer Circle Media. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcasts.